Hi everybody, welcome back to Crochet Blessings. Um, I'm Carrie, and um, I've got a few things that I'd like to share with you today. Um, it's a little quieter. Um, my husband has a class coming up online soon, so I have to give him back the computer in about 35 minutes. So you guys will be glad to hear that I'm not going to talk as long today. Um, I just am going to show you some projects that I've been working on and some of them I've completed. Um, I'm here in my living room with the lap, my husband's laptop. I got quite a bit of stuff. And uh, I told you about our little doggies. This here is Rizzo. And I'm going to try to get her without her knowing because she will run and hide. She does not like her picture taken at all. And she'll hide on purpose just so that... Um, she can't have her picture taken. She's um, 13 years old. She'll be 14 in September and she's gone completely blind and um, she goes by smell to get around and she knows where things are at. We don't move our furniture and stuff too often because we don't want her to get disoriented. And then Bear is laying down on the blanket down on the floor so I won't show you him that. Uh, he'll, he'll eventually probably come up top here with me. But Rizzo, I've had her since 2000 and uh, April of 2007, I think. It was April. Anyways, she's a, she's a good girl, and um, she's real quiet. She barks when she hears something and everything that alerts the other dogs, and then the other dogs investigate, and the two b boys decide to be uh, security. I'll say that. Um, I have quite a few things going on here. Can I have that sissy? Thank you. Um, I've been getting things ready for our craft sale at our women's group. And um, sorry, I'm new to this recording on a video. Um, yet the last time was the very first time. This is my second time. So I'm still learning how to operate his laptop. He does something to his laptops and I just don't understand about using his laptop. So I don't. I just use my phone. Um, but I talk about the different things that I've made for our ladies group um, sale and I've got a few of those here. This here is that one uh, bath cloth I was telling you about how it's all rippled on the sides and I, I did a chain of five and then uh, skipped a couple loops, joined and did another set of five and then I went back around and I filled in each of the spots with... Um, 15 um, double crochets and it made it all ripply and kind of cute and then on the front here this is like a loofah um, the way I made that and um, the back behind it you can see it did kind of like a spiral uh, on the dishcloth or the washcloth dish dishcloth itself and then on the back that's where you really see the cabling made this ridge and stuff. You can see the ridges and everything. So it's textured and so it'll make either a good dishcloth or a good bath cloth, either one. And um, so I made that uh, acquisition. There we go. And um, I used on this back, I used I Love My Cotton um, from Hobby Lobby and it was like a watermelon color. Um, <clears throat> I don't, oh, here, sorry, I'm tr trying to be prepared so that I don't make everybody seasick and I don't make y'all late too much. Um, it's I Love This Cotton and it is uh, called Two Pink, T-O-O-P-I-N-K, and um, um, I got it because I, I want to make one of the dolls, um, Holly at the Proper Pineapple had this uh, doll pattern that she released. Well, when it came out, I purchased it, and I wanted to make some dolls for the girls in our family. Well, then we're having this craft sale coming up, and um, <clears throat> so I'm going to make a couple of dolls. I'm going to make a girl doll, and then I'm going to turn around and make a boy doll instead of just a girl doll and raffle them off as a prize at our um, <clears throat> at our craft sale and our uh, dinner that they're having. So that's what we've got going on. 
And this is one of the items that I've made for that sale. And then I have several others that I've got. Um, this is a washcloth. I've got the washcloth that's self-completed. And this is made with a, um, a popcorn cluster stitch. And I still have to put a little bit of a row around it. And I made it kind of longer on one corner like this so that I can take and uh, make a loop so that if they want to, they can hang their washcloth up to dry on those hooks that you put in the showers uh, so that it'll dry before you put it in the laundry and then you're not getting uh, stinky clothes from uh, your wet towels and stuff. And this is a, a really nice um, <coughs> textured stitch and it made the dishcloth I'd say it's probably about a fourth of an inch thick, so it's really nice and heavy duty, and um, I can't wait to get that finished up. I just have to trim it out a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I've got this other thing here, a couple other things here, I guess, completed for Christmas. They want a wide variety of things, so I'm going to do... Um, all seasons, working on all seasons, even if it's summer or whatnot. So this is just a, uh, it can be a dishcloth, it can be a hot pad, um, you know, something like that. And then, of course, I put the loop on there so that um, they can hang it up and everything, keep track of it in the kitchen. And then I made this, or you can place this as a table centerpiece, and then you can put like a vase of flowers on it or something like that. Um, I was thinking about maybe crocheting a, a poinsettia for the center here um, and take up that space so that it looked prettier and then it could even just be the table decoration itself. So I haven't quite figured that out, but I still have time. Um, there's no rush on any of that right now. I'm just trying to get some stuff picked out and then finish up trimming it as we go along. And, um, let's see, I'm, I've already started my second of these, of this, so that I'll have that going. Um, I probably will do like one, maybe two of certain items so that it doesn't have too much of the same thing. I want a good variety so that people can have stuff, different things to choose from. Um, I've got my cotton yarn here. Um, these are things of cotton that I've gotten already started, work it, been working with them on other projects. So I can um, crochet different projects for the craft sale. Um, this here is one of those braided cowls. And when they were doing the braided cowls, uh, back when it was winter time, I started this hot and heavy. It just my hands got tired, and I uh, went through a little bit of a funk, and so I didn't finish it yet. But I started it, and I was using this puzzle yarn right here, Premier, Premier Puzzle, and I had some purple, and, uh, pink and gray, and it also has some light purple in this. And then they also have or had this uh, purple color right here, like this. And, um, uh, let's see, the purple one is 328 yards, it's a 7 ounce skein, and it is called Tangram, T-A-N-G-R-A-M, I believe that's the color on it. Uh, and then the number for it is 1050-11. Um, but I think this might be discontinued because I got a really good sale when I got this. Um, I ended up getting it like $350. I, I paid no more than $350 a skein for yarn when I bought yarn. And um, I had coupons and sales were going on. And you could use coupons with the sales. And this was last year when we were down in Dallas. And then this pink one is called, um, it's called Word Search. 
and the number is 1050-05 and the uh, looks like the lot number on this is 8190 and the purple lot number is 4547 so I, I bought me some of that while it was cheap um, but I've started out instead of doing three um, rows of these braids I did five because I'm a little bit bigger girl I'll wear an extra large to two extra large shirt I've got big shoulders and stuff and um, my, my ladies are larger too and so I have to have a little bit larger of a shirt and I started out here with that pink one of the the puzzle group and then I went I did five sets of that then I went here to the middle which is the blue um, I got that that's a Karen one pound color right here and um, it's worsted weight and this um, puzzle yarn it says it's a bulk, bulky five but it's not bulky it's more like a four weight it, it's just it's not bulky at all um so then it went down to a smoother surface and then I've just gotten to where I started back in with that gray and pink again and then once I get the five rows of the gray and pink um I'm doing them in rows of five until I get it to where it'll go all the way around uh on the rows and stuff for a larger lady and um then after I do this second set of the gray pink and purple uh multicolored I'm going of the puzzle color I'm going to go on to soft pink and um, then I'll finish it out I can't remember if my son's friend likes pink more or blue more I'm going to have to ask but anyways um, she's this is for her and um, what I'm going to do is make the the wraparound neck collar part then I'm going to add a hood to it and then after I add a hood to it, I'm going to turn the bottom part into like a poncho for her. Um, she's a larger girl and she hates wearing coats. And um, she doesn't really like getting fussy and, and stuff girly wise and everything. Um, so that would be uh, about the prettiest she could go comfort wise for her emotional levels and stuff. So I went ahead and um, I did something that, where she got to pick the colors and so I'm working on that right now and I like it it's really pretty and when you start the braids through it looks really nice I think um, anyways I haven't worked on this in a, quite a while but I got it out to show you because I work on a lot of different stuff and I go back and forth between things because I'll get bored with one thing and then I'll have to change to another because of the fact that I've gotten bored with it and uh, so it'll take me a while to get my things finished up and I always uh, have enough hooks. Um, my hooks are the squishy rubber handled hooks. And um, they're, let's see, I think they're boy brand. Yeah, they're boy brand. And um, I try to have, especially of my favorite hook size I use, like the K hook I use a lot. And so um, it's a 6.5 millimeter. And... Um, since I use this one a lot, I have probably three or four of this size hook uh, sitting with different projects and stuff. I use the K a lot and G a lot and then H and I think that's it. Those are my main ones. But then I'll use bigger ones sometimes and littler ones sometimes. And My tinier hooks I use to kind of weave my ends in. And stuff and um, it makes it easier I'm not messing with a uh, I'm not messing with a uh, there you go Rizzo she's moving around I'm sorry um, but anyways she uh, uh, this way I have my hook with me I don't have to worry about the hook size it's already there and I just pick it up and start going again so I don't usually use stitch markers I usually, um, pull, like on this, I've pulled out a good little portion of the, the yarn away from the project. And then I fold it up neatly and tuck it down. And then I put it in a plastic bag. 
and then I put that plastic bag inside my project bag. So it keeps all of my um, materials clean. Um, and with us having four dogs, I want to keep as much of the dog hair off of anything I would make because of the fact that, you know, not everybody has dogs. They're not going to want dog hair on their stuff, especially if they're paying for someone else to do it. And it's supposed to be brand new and unused and, un, you know, unhairy. Um, is the best way to put it but I just I, I like to try to keep the dust off of them and then also when I put things away it's all grouped together the ball of yarn the project and the hook um, it makes it easier on me so there's that project I'm just dropping these on the floor down here beside me I'm sitting on our couch um, you'll see the background of my couch change a lot it'll either be this or like an ivory color or um, that one plaid light color the other day I had on here red and checkered plaid, plaid looking. Um, I use blankets or bed sheets to cover up our couch because our dogs go out and romp around so much in the mud in the backyard. Um, and it rains in Illinois. It rains a lot in the spring, again in the fall. And so they come in muddy. And the first thing they do is they go running into the living room, racing each other and wrestling, not paying attention. And then they bring the wrestling up on the furniture. And my couch is like a cream color. And I want to keep it clean. So I always put the blankets on there and then change them out as needed. And so the, the background here will change a lot. And then up top here I have my picture frames I got at um, one of the dollar stores. I haven't figured out which family pictures I want to put in the one on this side over here. Um, I found these and it was not that they were expensive because they weren't but they were just really pretty. They were real elegant so that's why I chose that one and I found this one here this bear one. Uh, this I found at the um, uh, Goodwill store in Champaign, Illinois and I thought oh that will look pretty with my other two picture frames so I've got that and then this one here is a picture of I think poppies is what that flower is and then it's got a real elegant looking design on its um, framing and stuff so that's why I like that and then that's a light over there again uh, we just rearranged our furniture to where um, our couch was on the side kind of blocking all the walking path and the dogs were romping and knocking it around, and I thought, no, I, I was getting tired of it being there, and I was having to clean up after it all the time and move it all the time. And I moved it, got it over here stationed on the wall, thinking that tucking the blanket behind the couch, half the blanket behind the couch and the other half on the couch would keep it on. No, they keep making it a mess and stuff, so... But here we go. We've got some more acquisitions, I think you call them acquisitions, um, of finished projects. Um, now, I've posted a lot of these things, pictures of these things, on my Facebook pages and, and group pages. But I'm going to show you what they look like in real life. Um, this here is called a walker pocket. And I just winged this. I didn't have a pattern to go by this at all. Um, sometimes on some things and then I made straps but that I put ties right here at the bottom so it can tie both the front and the back together and then right here like it's got a pocket you can put like a big bottle of water or you know just little things they'll need during the day and what came about with these is I made a walker pocket for my husband's walker when he was really sick uh, right after he had gone into the hospital for kidney failure and everything and so he needed one well then I had another lady ask me well how much would you charge me to make me one of those and I told her and she goes oh well that's too much I said well honey it's not the fact of I want to charge you too much it's the fact that the cost of the materials oh well then she understood so um, that all she after that it was okay but um, and then of course I put the little um, decorative flower on the it's kind of squished right now and then when I go to pull it back out later it'll it'll perk back up because I'll just fluff it out um 
But there's that one. I uh, trimmed it out. This is the Bernat uh, blanket yarn I used, and it's like nine or ten bucks a skein, and it's that Dove um, lilac Dove or something like that. But it's got little bits of lavender and gray in with the white, and then I just trimmed it out in a lap uh, in a solid lavender. And um, I've had that one done for quite a while. Then here's another thing that I started up. Sorry for all the bag rattling. I'm just trying to get my projects out quickly for you. Um, this is another project I started on. It's um, I, I thought I was going to do like a table runner kind of thing for the table or like an end table decorative thing again. And someone says, well, would you do a pillow with it instead? So I have it and I finally have my pillows that I can use the stuffing for my pillows so that I can go ahead and put it in here and then sew it up. So I've got my um, yarn and my hook ready that was the same size I crocheted this with. And then I just got to put it together and, and crochet it. It won't take very long at all to do that, I don't think. Um, but that's what this here looks like. I had a lot of fun making this one because it was in rounds of diff the different colors of the yellows. and the. Uh, this was a, like a greenish color. Um, oh, almost like a mint green, kind of, and then this is that bright hot pink, and then this is like a tealish blue, and, uh, and then this is, well, I guess this is that tealish blue, too, but I had a lot of fun making that one. I, wa I watched that one grow, and then the back of it I just did in a solid print of nothing but all pink, so... I really liked that one a lot. And I've got one, two, three, three, four more things to show you. And then I'm I'm all done. Um Okay, here's my bag of hats. Now these hats I made when I first started crocheting. Uh real heavy again when we were out in the semi-truck. This was before Chris got sick. And uh, it's one of those little kids' uh, little child's hat, and it has the little tassel like that. And then I trim, put a little bit of a trim down here. And I thought I might put like a little snowflake or something on it somewhere. So there's what that looked like. And uh, my coloring is off. Um, well, maybe not. I don't know. My house looks a little yellow, I guess. This is like a soft green and a blue, a soft blue put together. And this is just um, the Red Heart yarn. And what I just held two strands together and then I went back and forth in uh, double crochets all across. And then after I, I stitched the top of the hat closed and I put some tassels on it uh, just for make it look fun for the littler kids because most kids like tassels and pom-poms on their hats when they're younger. Um, and then this is a, a ladies adult size hat I made and this is made out of that same um, uh, Bernat blanket yarn that I made that walker pocket with and I just made a hat. I didn't put any flower on it yet or a brim but that is the next. I just have to put a purple brim on the bottom here and then on the side I'm going to probably put one of those purple um, flowers with the yellow center to it um, and then complete that hat and get that ready for the sale and then I've got I've started another um, I think this is a virus shawl. Yeah, I started another virus shawl, and it's a different, um, it's a different type of material or color. I used the DK colors by Premier, 
and it's color with uh, it's got 383 yards in the um, cake and it's five ounces and it's a light uh, light three weight it says which it is a lightweight um, thread and its color is 1071-20 and it's teal blue and um, but here's what the skein looks like um, but I've started that that one right here and I'm using a size G hook usually when I crochet uh, the virus shawl I was using like the four weight um, yarn like Karen one pound or uh, red heart or something like that that was a little bit heavier of a yarn um, my my two most beautiful shawl virus shawls I did was one I made with red heart uh, stripes latte and it had multiple colors of brown and tan and gold through it is really pretty and I gave that one to um, my husband's aunt down in Texas and then the other one that I really really liked was made out of different shades of purple and that one was made out of a Karen uh, Karen big cakes and um, it was in the grape jelly colorway and that was my favorite one as well um, I would have actually kept that one for myself but I didn't I, li I liked it a lot but I gave it to my daughter for her birthday so um, I wanted her to have something pretty and something special for herself um, but this is the new one I'm working on uh, right now in the th thinner weights and it's blue colors like teals um, and I've been using a, a an H hook with that instead of the K hook and then my last thing I have to show you is my sweater. I started the back panel of a sweater I'm working on for myself, which I just work on it when I can. And I've gotten a little bit more done on it uh, lengthwise this way. Um, but this is very delicate. It's a wool and viscose um, yarn. It's that Yarn Bee Chloe yarn called Breezy Sunrise and it's got 270 yards three and a half ounces and it is 70% wool and 30% yeah 30% viscose so I was right on that um, and I'm just about finished with my first um, I don't know if these are called cakes or what exactly these are called but it's those little spongy ball like rounds so I'm almost finished with my first one and then I've got two more of these for now and um, I'm gonna have to uh, maybe bribe my son to come and get me and take me to champagne so that I can um, get me a few more of these to finish my sweater out but I'll uh, have to give him some gas money for coming to get me or something so Anyways, that's that, and it's looking really pretty back and forth on the colors. It's pastel colors. That's why I liked it so much, and I'm using the um, um, uh, the cluster popcorn stitch with it. And as you can see, in some spots it's real thin right here, and then in some spots it gets thickened up. And it's a real fuzzy yarn. It's not easy if you mess up. And you have to backtrack and pull it back out it's not easy to get it to come back out it sticks together it's got like a fuzzy halo to it and all of that you can kind of see it right in here on that on the yarn there that it's got that fuzzy stuff and that puzzle yarn from Premier that also has a fuzzy halo to it as well and it can tend to do the same stuff but not as bad as what this wool does but that's the first time I've worked with wool, so that was a neat experience. Um, I always talk about having neuropathy and my hands feeling uh, pain and stuff like that, so I always have to be real careful not to get something that irritates the nerve endings in my hands. So, 
and that's it as far as all my projects that I'm working on or have worked on and, and ready to complete. Um, I'll have more stuff done, I'm sure, by the end of this week or next that I can show you. The only other thing I wanted to show you real quick is um, on my uh, video page, on uh, my YouTube page, I'll do crochet stuff. And then there's times where you'll see other ones where I'm going to do a devotion um, thing where I'll read a little bit of Bible scripture. And I'm going to see if I can't get permission from the um, publishers of this um, Whispers of Hope book. It's by Beth Moore. So if you want to follow along and go uh, along with us in the uh, Bible study, you're very welcome to do so. Um, I think I posted on my new page on Facebook. It's Crochet Blessings, um, all one word. And the C on Crochet is capitalized. The B on Blessings is capitalized. Uh, two, 2019 on Facebook and Instagram. And then my YouTube page is just Crochet Blessings. When I started my face or my YouTube page first I didn't realize there was another person who had a crochet blessings or I would have added the 2019 to it also and I'm not sure how to go in and edit that to um, make it where it says 2019 and then everything's uniform and, and everyone's not confused looking for my pages um, but anyways I posted pictures of um, my the Bible study book I want to do and um, also my uh, study Bible I got. It's the women's uh, NIV um, where's the thing here we go women's um, study Bible in the NIV edition and what it is is it's got um, an introduction of course but in here it's got each of the chapters of the Bible and I've got these tabbies so it'll be easier for me to find things and I'll be more prepared for you all and then it's got a little bit of breakdowns of um, like a little Bible story a preface to things and everything so um, and then it'll have other scripture references that you can um, go to uh, like other verses that compare you can compare and and look at different information to cross-reference back and forth between the Genesis clear back to Revelation um, and this is a full Bible in everything and I ordered mine through the Christian bookstore.com and okay I'm almost done uh, that I got this and it was on sale for $24.99 my Bible was and um, this book was gifted to me um, by our pastor to all the women in our ladies group, uh, in our all the ladies in our church. And so um, that's how I got this Bible study. He gave, gifted all the mothers for Mother's Day. So I'll give you a couple weeks to get that together, and that'll give me time to get everything prepared. And then I can come on and record, um, hopefully without interruptions, and I may seem rushed tonight. It's just my husband Chris is taking classes. Um, he can't go back to truck driving when he gets his new kidney transplant. So he has to have a different career to go to when he gets his kidney transplant and he's done. So that's what I've got him working on. Um, I got him... Uh, okay. I got him encouraged enough that he... Uh, contacted CTU which is Colorado Technical University and he's going for his bachelor's degree in computer sciences in the IT program so um, he just started April 2nd so he's just beginning his classwork now and I'm proud of him he's he's doing really good with his classes he struggles in some of it but he just asks for help and they give it to him and he's doing great I'm very proud of everything he's doing to try to make himself better. All right, well, that's it for now, and thank you for watching. 
And I uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'm not sure if it's down on this side or if it's down on this side. But there's a subscribe button. Make sure and subscribe and come back and visit with us. And if you're interested, share our page and invite others to come and join us too. Um, I post uh, Christian artist music. I post um, events that are happening. Um, I have some people that I personally know um, that host revival services or... Um, I'm not sure what they call it now, but it used to be called Revival Services. And they'll come and they'll preach at your church and they um, do music at, worship music at your church. Um, and they're going to post links on the page, so watch for that. Um, it's uh, uh, Jennifer Brewer Wilkerson and her husband Bob Wilkerson. They're a wonderful Christian couple and they just do so much for the, for the Lord in service. And they are just an outstanding Christian couple. They have the cutest little twin daughters and everything. But um, they'll have something posted on my page soon. And I've got some new music things that people contact me through Instagram that have already posted. And I had no idea who they were. And I went and I looked on their page and on their um, music demo. And it was so cool. It was. And um, I found out that their actual... Um, artists, famous or semi-famous Christian artists and stuff, or no, new and upcoming artists. So that was exciting that they saw my page and they actually asked me to post their stuff on my pages. So I was really excited about that. Um, I think that's it for now. So y'all have a great um, evening. Uh, you'll probably get this actually in the morning, unless you're a night owl like we are. We're up late. Um, due to Chris's schooling and all of his dialysis appointments and doctor's appointments and stuff, he doesn't like to go to sleep too early. We're usually in bed between like 11 and 2 in the morning. And then I usually can't wake up very easily the next morning if we're up really late. So I sleep late too. But um, uh, I, I think that's it for now. Y'all have a great evening and rest of the day. Um, and I'm going to say a quick prayer with you, okay? Um, Lord, thank you for this audience, and thank you for the people who are interested in this page, the Crochet Blessings. Uh, Lord, if they have anything in their lives that they need prayer for, hurts and healings and, and sick family members, or they themselves are in need of healing, a healing touch from you, Lord, please reach down and bless them and just touch them with every ounce of the fiber of your being and heal them from the top of their head to the tips of their feet. Lord, wrap your arms of protection and love around them and let them know that you're always there with them. And Lord, if there's any of those that don't know you who would like to know you, please make them feel comfortable and safe enough to reach out that they can ask for prayer in private, in confidence. And um, all they have to do is... is uh, send me a message and I'll contact them back and I can even call them and talk to them over the phone. Lord, just be with everyone in every situation that they have going on in their lives. In your precious name we pray these things. In your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, you all have a good night. Bye-bye.